uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, we going live. Oh, yeah. All right. I think we're live. We are live. What's up, everybody? Hello. I'm Jay Wall Print That Thing. And today we're talking about you're not really 3D printing unless you 3D print your own ideas. Let me know if y'all can hear me in the chat down out there. Um, if the sound and the music are coming through. We got a bunch of things that we're going to do today. What's up, James? I saw we got Peter, first person in. Hey, what's up, Peter? We got someone from Portugal. Who's that? John from Portugal and Rob McKay. Hello, everybody today. Hope you're having a great day. I am super excited, super pumped up. I've been waiting for this for the past few a week, I guess now. So thanks for everyone for coming to come hang out. Okay, cool. Thanks for the feedback, Peter. So he says it's fine. We got from London, the UK. So what time is it in the UK? Like 7-ish, 7 p.m.? Is that what we're talking? Where are we at on time? And we'll probably get started right at 1 o'clock my time. Um, but just kind of make sure everything is flowing and going, ready to start talking about designing. So out there in, hey, what's up? Sangita, Canada, cool. Dreamer Boy, 1856. Okay, cool. Good time. Not sure. I can't convert the military time, but it's probably like seven, I would say, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, let me know what kind of experience y'all have or what kind of 3D printers y'all have currently, or if you don't have a 3D printer, let me know in the chat. And while y'all are doing that, I just want to give a huge shout out to my boy, Ed, and uh, he's with Institute of 3DP and he helped promote this event. So thank you, Ed. Ed's just an awesome dude. If you don't have his PDF, what are you doing? You got to do it. It's, they're super duper incredible and helpful and helped me tremendously when I got some of my new 3D printers. So there's some tips and tricks for getting really good quality prints. And then I also took or am a member of his actual platform, which teaches you all kinds of stuff, slicer settings, temperatures. I mean, it's just crazy. I'm more of a designer, so um, I kind of focus more on that space. But Ed's really opened my eyes and just made me a way better 3D print uh, printer. So I'm sure most of y'all out there are very, 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 very good 3D printers, but maybe some of you out there don't know how to design or you're interested in design. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. But yeah, again, shout out to Ed. Yee I don't know if he's watching, but if you're watching Ed, what's up? Thanks, dude. <laughs> and so let's see what we got. What kind of printers are we talking about here? Everyone tinkers, says Rob. So we got 7 p.m. in London. CR10, Peter, me too. That's what I got. CR10, I love the CR10. Got the CR10S, but I actually blew the motherboard or something. I don't. I surged it somehow. <laughs> Let's see. Shaw says, I'm a cake designer, making stuff for students and make cutters. That's cool. That's really great. So you're already designing. BV, worst one ever, M3D. Okay. Well, I have a MakerBot, so that's probably even worse than that one, uh, BV. Uh, cookie cutters, holding, rolling pins, etc. That's cool. 2017 Tiva Tarantula. Cool. I have one of those too, but mine's the newer one, but I'm sure they're similar. Yes, the orange. That was from David. Andrew Lego CR10S. All right. Yes. All right. So we're, we all got the same. No one's got any SLA printers. No one's doing SLA. We got Ender 3. Very cool. I know people love Ender 3. Dreamer Boy just wants to learn. And let's see. Modified CR10 to direct drive. Me too. I got the, uh, what is it called? Bontech. All right, one more minute here and we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, lean, so it needs to learn more design. Just ordered any cubic photon. Cool. I haven't heard much about that one. Tiffany and Ryan both have that. So it must be popular. Not sure. Ooh, okay. Here we go. James got the El, El Mars. That one seems to be very popular too. Kickstarter spark maker thing. Also, SLA. okay, cool. I've seen that one. Tiffany longer 10 is an SLA. Oh, cool. Okay. So it sounds like most of y'all have 3d printers. A few of y'all are designing. Some people aren't, but today we're just going to be talking about why you should be 3d print designing. Cause I think it's, it's incredible. I mean, I'm obviously biased because I'm a designer, but uh, I think it could be very helpful for a lot of people, especially if you already have a 3d printer. It's a, uh, kind of makes it even mo better. So if everyone's ready to go, it is one o'clock on the dot in Central Time. So thanks everyone again for coming to hang out. Let's go ahead and get started. 
We've got a lot to cover today. We are going to be just hitting the ground running. And so if you want to take notes, take notes. If you don't want to, don't take notes. Just sit and hang out, watch. I'm going to show you a bunch of stuff. You're going to hopefully get some ideas and get inspired to start creating stuff. So let's do it. <laughs> so, all right. We got a new one, Dime Honor Dodger. Prusa i3. All right, we got Prusa in the house. I just set up an affiliate system with Prusa. That's so cool. I really want to get one of theirs just to see how good they really are. All right, but let's go ahead and get started. So by the end of the live event today, hopefully it's only going to take about 30, 45 minutes. Hopefully it can get you out of here within an hour. I know I talked to some people via email. They were saying they're going to be at work. So we're going to get right on into it and just keep pow, pow, pow <laughs> and going. But today you're going to learn the benefits of why you should be learning 3D print design uh, if you never have or not interested. You're also going to be learning very easy ways to get started. And then we're going to talk about my three personal design secrets uh, and free downloads. These are things that I use every single day, whether I'm doing stuff for myself or for clients or for anyone. But I think it's going to help you a lot and you'll get all that today. And then we're also going to do some tips to help you stay motivated, keep you on track. And then we're going to do a live Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions you can ask during the thing, I'll try my best to see it. I have it all right here on the side. Uh, but if you, um, if you have extra questions or I didn't see your question, then just let me know at the end and I'll answer everybody's questions. No problem at all. So yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, today, your instructor is moi. It's me. I'm Jason Wall, aka J Wall of Print That Thing. And one is like, you know, why should we listen to this guy is I am a full-time 3D print designer. I've worked with clients. I've worked uh, as an educator. I've taught students. I've taught adults. I've taught uh, people at my companies that I've worked with. So um, it's just a lot of fun. So I've been doing that since 2013 and kind of was an early adopter, uh, but I've always been interested in design. I think that's where a lot of the power and fun part is for 3D printing. And then the other reasons that you may want to listen is that I've helped already over 10,000 people get started with 3D print design or just kind of getting them interested in 3D printing in general. That was kind of the mission of my YouTube channel back in 2013. And then now I am the CEO of Print That Thing, which started off as a YouTube channel, but now we're switching it more into an edutainment platform with just consistent um, ongoing education, live meetups. We meet every Wednesday to talk about how to make money with your 3D print design skills. I know a lot of people aren't talking about that and it's huge, it's ginormous. So we do a lot of that and we do um, monthly workshops that kind of like a boot camp essentially for designers if somebody really wants to learn quick. So we can talk a little bit about that later if y'all want. Um, but yeah, that's me. I'm Jason Wall. Also love being in nature. I love skateboarding. I love singing and rapping and playing the ukulele. I love lots of stuff. Really, I just like to make people laugh. I like to entertain people. I like to teach people. And really, I like to share. I really like to create things and then sh give them away and share most of the time. Uh, that's, um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Um, any questions so far before we dive in? Or anyone uh, hesitant to becoming a 3D print designer? Let me know in the chat. If anyone's excited about being becoming a 3D print designer or maybe on the fence, kind of hesitant, uh, we'll talk about that. So I know we got about a five or maybe 10 second delay. So I'll give it a few seconds before we dive in. What's up, El Shea? We got greetings, um, Tiffany and then Shah. Woohoo! All right. So I'm not seeing any questions. So let's just go ahead and dive in. Why should you or anyone out there become a 3D print designer? We're going to talk about that right now. So number one reason why is to increase your creativity. And it'll also help you just start seeing everything around you differently. You're gonna be walking into the store. You're gonna be like, oh wow, that's just a basic shape with a little thing extruded out of it. And then, or you'll be able to hopefully create your own designs or even just modify things that you download from the internet. And it is extremely satisfying just to change something or remix something, but it's like crazy awesome if you can think of an idea or dream of an idea and then make it reality within a day or two. It's just insane, the world and the time that we're living in. Um, so these are some of the things that I've made. I made this crazy weird hat that people either hate or they love, but uh, it's very funky and weird, but that's all 3D printed. And then a little ring that's like a similar to the hat kind of goes together, like a little fashion accessory. Um, and then um, I wanted to make an old school stereoscopic rig from, you know, the 
old, old, old back in the day where they would look at photos, but instead I set it up to do it for your phone so you could watch YouTube 360 just for fun. But it was just a goofy idea, 3D printed in wood. But, you know, essentially it's just going to increase your creativity. You're going to become a happier person just because I believe we are here to be creators. And the more that you create and express yourself, just little endorphins come out and it just feels good. So um, you also will get buried into what I call the flow state or the zone. Uh, a lot of athletes or um, artists have this when they get lost and time just disappears. It's going to help with that and just keep boosting your happiness. <laughs> so that's what I do. I do it every day and it's super fun. Never gets old yet. What else? See. So we got some stuff here. All right. Can't wait to do more. Ninja. See, I like to modify and remake stuff. Cool. And I draw my designs in Procreate procreate and turn them into cookie cutters. That's cool. Well, that's great. So you can make cookie cutters. You can do all kinds of stuff. And we're going to talk about more on that. Okay. Shaw says, like to learn how to use SVG. Okay. That's good. So we're like logos and stuff. But the reason number two of why I think you or anybody should learn 3D print design is because you're going to actually get more out of your 3D printer. So uh, I know most of y'all have 3D printers. I have like five out there. So I try to just keep them going as much as possible. Um, but really your 3D printer is just a tool. That's why I put the hammer here today is because the, the 3D printer is amazing and awesome and you can th 3D print all these free things off the internet and it's just incredible. But eventually you'll kind of run into a spot, at least I did, um, where you kind of like, you've printed a lot of things that you've already wanted to print or maybe you need to alter something or you just want to create your own ideas. That was like my first thing when I got my printer. I was like, I, can't, I just gotta get my ideas from here to there. And so it was killing me. This was back in 2013 where like nobody was really talking about this. So really, if you have a 3D printer and you're not designing your own ideas, you're leaving like 50% of the experience on the table. That's, I mean, and that's not, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying there's a lot more that you can do with this tool. And then let's go into the third reason why I think you should learn. And that is to help yourself, one, first and foremost, and then help others. So you can use 3D printers to literally touch every industry, pretty much. Like, I, it's hard to think of one industry you can't uh, use 3D printing for. So I want you to ask yourself, what are you, like, really good at? What do you, what do you already love to do? What, do you, what are your main interests? And see if you can apply 3D printing or 3D printing design to that. So you can either help yourself or help others. And what's great is that you can start off by just helping yourself and having fun. And then you can start helping others by doing like designing for people um, or, you know, getting paid to design. And you can get paid really, 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 really well if you are a 3D designer. And uh, it just feels good. It feels good to help people. And there's so many different things. So what in the chat, let me know what kind of... Um, ideas or things you feel like you would be really good at or things that you could apply 3D print design to in order to help yourself or others. And so while you're doing that, I'm going to go over a few of just some things that you can use 3D print design for. One and first and foremost, most people think about is 3D printer upgrades. This is amazing. You can take just a normal kind of cheap printer and add a bunch of cool stuff to it. You can actually 3D print the parts and design them custom for your printer for specific things. An example of this uh, I needed um, a like a button presser for my time lapses, so I just made the, I just measured my 3D printer, and within like an hour or two, I made this really advanced grip holder that held like a remote control for my camera, and then every time the layer would change, it would and like take a picture for me with like a super HD camera, and it looks incredible. So just it, it's endless. It really could go on forever. Um, Hey, what's up? Any Mutt in the chat. That's my lover lady. She helps a lot over here print that thing too. Uh, she's kind of the brains behind all the operation and I'm just the weird guy. <laughs> um, but uh, there's also things like cosplay and fashion. So I know this is really huge in the 3D world is just making up cool wearables that you can do or doing fashion. I see a lot of people on Instagram doing more like cloth type uh, things with 3D printing. I love 3D printing fashion like wearables, hats, rings, all that I'm super into that. So that could be something you want to do. Uh, you can do product design, which is what I'm solely focused on this year and next year is just making like a new product every week and then printing it on demand to actually make tons of revenue without really even 3D printing that much. So we're going to talk more and more about that on the podcast, but you can also do product design for yourself just for fun. You can do product design 
for clients, if you want to actually get paid, like, you know, anywhere from 75 to a couple hundred dollars an hour to design. So it's really limitless. And then you can also do medical field, like whenever the, um, the pandemic hit, a lot of the 3D printers like printed tons and tons and tons of face masks, which is amazing. But imagine if you could create your own face mask or just made little adjustments that you wanted to, then you can do that. And you can do bioprinting in the future. We're kind of getting there, but eventually you're going to be able to print art, like hearts and lungs and kidneys and all kinds of stuff. They're already doing it a little bit, but it's just going to get crazy and crazier. So if you're in the medical field and you want to help people, that's one way you could do uh, you know, 3D printing for bio. And then a few more is automotive and home design. So automotive is what I'm really excited for once we get to the 3D printing metal phase. And then I have this old yellow beat up 74 pickup truck. So I just want to like resurrect it and put like crazy parts in it and just 3D print these huge pieces in metal. And I mean, I can design them now, but eventually I'll be able to print in metal and make really cool upgrades for custom uh, trucks, which I think is going to be super cool. You know, I'm going to put like flames shooting out the butt <laughs> of my truck. That's my goal. Um, and then the last one is home design, which you can actually 3D print houses. They're already doing it in China and Italy. And I really, my personal goal is to 3D print houses out of organic material like uh, earth material or, or cob, adobe, essentially. So that's kind of my, one of my top five goals in my life that I'm kind of aiming towards. But just to let you know, it can go as small as 3D printer upgrades to building skyscrapers uh, for, you know, it's, it's crazy. So that was my rant on that. Let's see what some of y'all are saying here. Sorry, I got kind of carried away there. <laughs> um, oh, prototyping for a flying car bike. That's awesome. And then we've got any making toys for children book characters. Cool. Amber's actually finished up her first book, her children's book. That's great. Uh, slice STL models as a remix, then learn how to make alignment pins. Okay, so very strategic kind of tolerance things for manual. John wants to print gargoyles for my wall. Yeah, dude. And you can even sell those like for people's gardens and stuff or just for house decorations. That's great. Shah, yes, toys for kids. She agrees. Or he agrees. Also embedding logos and text onto parts. Very good. That's the we're entering into the world of customization. So the more you're able to customize things, much very, very good. That's very good. So that was Kendra. We got my son in his medical field. Pottery tools would be awesome. I have an engineering background, so product design, inventions. Yes, that's where I'm at. Um, Ryan, I'm an inventor. I just like to make up ideas, solve problems. It's fun. And 3D print with sugar and chocolate. Yeah, so even food. I forgot about that. But yeah, food. You can do food 3D printing. And that's going to get more and more popular over the next few generations, I believe, uh, strongly. So James said he's already product designed. Good job, James. I love that. I've been designing the world's first recreational closed circuit rebreather. I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds like a very great idea. Okay, cool. And then Peter mentioned Sculpt. And we are going to talk about that later today. So let's go ahead and jump into the next slide which is how do you become a 3D print designer? What on earth do you do? What are the good practices? What are things that you can start doing today that are actually going to help you become a badass 3D print designer? Excuse my French, but let's go ahead and get into it. So number one, how or which software do you pick? You know, what are the prices? How much? So when I first got started in 2013, I was just like so excited. I'm a filmmaker, but I was like, I'm going to learn 3D. I'm going to do it. I'm going to buy this big fancy printer that I don't have to really w worry about. And then I'm going to buy the most expensive software and just I'll be good to go. And that'll like make me learn, which it did. But I strongly recommend to not do that because uh, you, there's no really need to go into huge amounts of debt like I did uh, to do this. But I was just so passionate. I knew that the debt would probably hold me accountable, which it did. But uh, please don't do that. Uh, but I wanted to give you kind of the top three free softwares that you have at your disposal today that you can start with. Most of you are probably familiar with them, but we're going to go over a little bit for anyone who doesn't know anything about this kind of stuff. So the first one is Tinkercad. Yes, so Tinkercad is just tinkercad.com. And it's free. It's super basic. It's for, I would say, for kids, for anyone who just is like never done software ever in their life. This is a very basic one. It's very user-friendly. It's very colorful, very bright, very simple. So I would suggest that one. If you just, you know, are just barely dipping your toes in, that's a really great one, I think, to start with. Um, you can do some complex designs. This monkey here with the little guy, this is actually um, a design I made 
inside of Tinkercad just with basic shapes. So basic shapes and then cutting some, you know, cutting them out. Um, so that's why it looks a little boxy around his elbows and stuff and the banana in the back. But you can do some really cool stuff with Tinkercad. And then next is Fusion 360. This one is very popular in the 3D printing world. Um, it is essentially has a 30 day free trial. So you can take the and get the entire software for 30 days. Uh, but what most people use it that I see in, in our industry is the hobbyist version. And so that's free as long as you're not making so much money with it. If it's not like your job, then you don't have to, then you have to, uh, you don't have to pay a license. So you can just, and you only get like half of the program or a percentage of the program, not the full, uh, thing, but this one is really good for like CAD type design, CAD type modeling or product design, um, tension strength, testing, rendering, things like that. And if you just want to just go out and buy it, you know you're going to be making money, then you can just do $4.95 per year, which is way less than the $3,000 I paid for with for Cinema 4D. Uh, but yeah, that one's very popular too. And they're both made by Autodesk, which is an incredible company. And then next we have Blender. This is my favorite one. This is the one I'm like obsessed with right now. Um, I was so against Blender in the beginning. You can ask Amber any much. She begged me to try and do Blender. I was like, no, because I was stuck in my ways with uh, with Cinema 4D. But then I tried it and I was like, wow, this is pretty incredible. And then they did an update uh, last year where they just started exploding with updates. They've changed the way it looks. It looks way sexier and it just looks like a 2020 program. It's the biggest and a most popular 3D printing software on the planet. And it has the biggest online community for helping and doing things like that. But today I wanna to show you how to use this uh, free and super professional tool for 3D print design. And if anyone's ever used Tinkercad, it's like, I call it like a blender to me is like Tinkercad on steroids. Like if you like Tinkercad, then you're gonna love Blender cause you can just do way more advanced things with your designs and keep everything organized and fun. Um, and then they also have plugins that you can use to do more kind of like a, a CAD, type, CAD type workflow for Blender. And I know a lot of my students are actually doing a lot of CAD inside of Blender. Um, and then you can do it with what I like to do a lot is sculpting. So you can sculpt, you can do all kinds of stuff. Uh, but one of the main reasons I really love Blender and why I like teaching uh, people early on with Blender is because it's like, it's, it's just the seed, you know what I mean? It's like you start with maybe 3D design and just box modeling and then it can keep growing. Maybe you wanna start doing like visual effects or virtual reality and it's just gonna, you have this one tool that's like a Swiss army knife for all these different directions. You can edit video with it. It's, it's just ridiculous, it's crazy. So I'm gonna show you some of that today. Let's see what we got in the chat. We got Indie Mutt Tinkercad is pretty cool, uh, Shay. Scuba setup where you, when you inhale, air goes back into the breathing loop and gets scrub, scrubbed for CO2 so you can breathe in. Okay, that's your your breathing apparatus. So for scuba? Yes, yeah, scuba. That's cool. I'm a certified scuba diver, even though I haven't done it in a long time. That's awesome, Josh. Check it out. Cool. Blender. I've been using Tinkercad. Okay, cool. Yeah, I figured a lot of people were tinkering with Tinkercad. Um, and then free access with Fusion. Would love to move to Blender, that's BV. Just make sure to get the hobbyist version, yes. So that's about Fusion 360. 360 Fusion 360 is home, home is free and very useful. Just go to their website, yes. Uh, let's see, John, what do you get, download? Okay, cool. Yeah, so for the download for the Fusion, all you have to do is just, um, it's in their little main page there for pricing. I was looking at it the other day. Oh, Peter says, what are your views on SketchUp? I actually have never used SketchUp. Uh, I, I want to. I'm, I'm actually trying to convince my mom to do SketchUp because she's doing more um, staging and like house design and stuff. So I was like, you should do SketchUp and then eventually get into Blender because it's amazing. Uh, so I think SketchUp would be really cool. Another thing that Blender is doing is they're doing a lot of modeling style now like SketchUp, which is pretty awesome. Uh, we got one. Oh, John said SCAD. Um and Mesh Mixer, yes, Mesh Mixer is a great one too. But the main three are the ones listed here, but there's just tons of them. I mean, there's literally like probably 50 different ones, but these are the top three kind of free ones that I see most people using and that I would recommend to get started. Oh, and FreeCAD, yes, thank you, John. So FreeCAD um, is like a, a, a browser-based software that you can do CAD type stuff in uh, for 3D printing. 
Cool. Thank you all for doing this. This is great. This is so much fun. So next number two on how to become a 3D print designer is just consistent intention. And uh, this is something that all great athletes and writers and designers and artists all have in common is just intention about what they are learning or what they are training for. They're not just like, oh, I'll just learn something over here and I'll learn something over here. You have like, okay, I'm trying to go in this path and this is my route to getting me there. And one thing that's really important, and this is something I'm working on uh, for the past few months, is just building better habits in general, uh, but also building daily design habits. So for the past few months, I've been getting inside of Blender and designing something or making a, a, a course or something every single day, even though, or in like Sundays when it's like, oh, I don't really feel like it, I'll still just get in there and play around with like a new feature or just try something to see what all it can do. So that's one thing I really want to harp on is um, getting daily habits because it's so powerful and it's really has changed my life. Uh, one example is to, uh, or the easiest way I would say to change your habits is starting at your identity of who you are. So an example, if you're trying to quit smoking, uh, you could say, someone could ask you like, hey, do you want a cigarette? And you could be like, no, uh, I'm trying to quit, you know, so that person's probably going to smoke eventually. Uh, but then there's someone who says, hey, do you want a cigarette? And then that, the other person would say, no, no, thanks. I'm not a smoker. So that there's identity shift in that. So if you want to become a designer, just start saying, I am a designer or what would a designer do? And that kind of give you some hints on what you can start doing to start setting up those daily habits. And it's very, very powerful. I've felt it firsthand. <laughs> So the next thing, this is one from Amber. She really wanted me to put this in, uh, Andy Mutt in the chat. She said, having a beginner mindset is also very, very helpful when you're starting out and whenever you're, you're advanced and even in professional world is never be like, oh, I know how to do that. Oh, I know that. I already know how to do that. Or I already know that software. Or I don't need to learn that software. You, you always want to keep your mind going like that childlike curiosity, like, oh, what is that? Oh, what does this do? And that's just going to keep dragging you along through the process and keep teaching you more and more things and just keeping you from getting bored. Because I know a lot of people are just kind of stick to what they're comfortable with, what they know. Uh, so I really want you to be able to just start looking at things around you and being like, ooh, could that be 3D printed? Oh, what if that was 3D printed? That's going to get you just thinking of ideas all the time and then putting it, you know, in your intention way, in your intention pathway to uh, starting design. And then the next one is volume, not perfection. So I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's not done yet. It's not ready. It's not, it's not perfect. Screw that. Like all you have to do is just create something, even if it's once a week or once a month, just try to get into the practice of just making something and posting it up or sharing it or doing something just to create a bunch of body, like a body of work. Because once you start making a, a lot of different designs, you'll start to notice different uh, similarities in between things. And that's when you're really going to find your style or your voice as a designer and really start to see what you really are interested in. Um, so that's very, very helpful. So let's see, we got some questions or topics here. Perpetual beginner. Exactly, El Shea. Perpetual beginner state. The, in the inevitable or the constant newbie stage. You always want to just stay in that little bubble there. And let's see. Yes, Indy. Don't know. Okay, so there, there she's... They're talking to Amber. Well, let's just keep on going. So the third way to, or, you know, how you can start designing is to start by just making things that you're passionate about. So create things that you really enjoy, things you love. So, you know, think about all the things that you already like now, whether it's like tabletop gaming or cars or, uh, you know, updating things on your printer. You can start there. And then it's just going to start exploding with new ideas. So that's what I would recommend is just start with something you love. You know, don't start on something because you think it's going to be popular or you think it's going to like get a bunch of views on something. Like, don't worry about that. Like that will just come naturally. But what I want you to focus on is creating things that you really, really, really enjoy and uh, get quality feedback. So whether that's someone that you trust, uh, but really what I would prefer or suggest is getting feedback from other like-minded people that are doing the same thing that you're doing. So it's a lot easier to maintain a habit or to keep things going if you're in a tribe or a, a group of people that are doing the same thing. It's just been proven. Uh, we're very, very much affected by the group and the people we surround ourselves with. So, you know, you may get some feedback from 
like your, you know, your significant other or something, but they might not really understand what you're doing or what you're trying to do. So I think it's really helpful to get feedback from like-minded people. And that's why we created our Discord. So I call it the Designers Discord. It's free. You can jump in and start asking questions. You can share things. We post stuff in there all the time. Uh, if you're a member of my site, then you can actually get feedback and help from some of your design projects. So it's just really fun. And I've had a blast just learning a ton from my students and teaching them a bunch. It's just, it's been, it's just been great. It's been able to just fun just to like connect with people uh, that are really interested. Cause I can talk to Amber all day long about this. Like, Oh, I just learned how to do this. And she's like, uh huh, cool. But when I tell these people, they get it and they know, no offense, Amber, I love you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's all that I have today for like, as far as when, or how to become a 3D print designer or why you should become a 3D print designer. But now we're gonna go into my three secrets for Blender. So these are ways to keep you very flexible. So that's secret number three. Secret number two, two we're gonna talk about today are tools that make you more efficient as a designer. And then my third or first secret, which is 3D print hacks. So these are just videos that I made. That way we don't have to go on for like, you know, 45 minutes. And again, you don't have to follow along. This is not training. This is just to show you what free professional software can do very easily. So let's go ahead and jump in it. Secret number three. And so again, like I said, this is the one that's going to help you stay very, very flexible. And if you've ever heard of generative design, this is where, you know, everything stays open and you can change things on the fly or just create tons of different designs from other uh, designs. And this is great for people who don't know what they want, or maybe you, you who don't know what they want. Um, and it just keeps you open and ideas flowing. Um, and you're never like, oh no, I messed up. I applied everything and I have to go back to, you know, eight hours ago of work. So we're going to use the modifiers. And these are just another word for effects inside of Blender. So today we're just going to add some modifiers or effects to these six monkeys here. So we've got this little Suzanne monkey. This is like the mascot. And we're just going to add a modifier. And today let's do subdivision surface. So subdivision surface is just another word for like smoothing. So you can take a very rough model and smooth it out very, very quickly. So you can just turn on and off, very flexible. Uh, but notice that the bottom of the design is kind of weird looking. It's not very flat. So that's another thing. If you rearrange your different modifiers, they're gonna do different things. So order of operations is very important, but you can also you know flip flop and try things all the time. And then if we take another monkey, same design, but we're gonna put a different um, modifier, which is the decimate modifier. And essentially this is like the low poly modifier. You can literally low poly any design you download, anything you get off the internet, anything you create, you can just turn it instantly low poly in real time and see kind of the effect. You can also use this when sculpting. If you have like huge meshes or photogametry, you can reduce your file sizes. You know, if it won't go in your slicer, decimate it, you know, just decimate that thing. And then you can get your file size lighter or make something low poly. Another thing you can do with the same design is put on remesh. So this is a new one that will almost like fix any 3D design that you have. Uh, you could also do blocks, which makes it look kind of like 8-bit and very uh, crazy or gives it kind of some texture. So it looks like we did all this modeling and design work, but we didn't. We just added a little effect to it and now it looks crazy cool. So that's another modifier that you can do. And Peter says, yes, Decimate is there on, on Mesh Lab too. That's great. So now let's do maybe this yellow monkey back here in the back. And this is one that I love, and this is the wireframe. So this is like, makes your designs instantly cooler just by putting on the wireframe. And it looks like a spider web at first, but what's cool is that you can actually just type in the exact dimensions. So if I want it to be like each wire to be two millimeters thick, I can do like 2.5. And look, now it's exactly 2.5 on all those little bars and then turn off the thickness to get rid of those weird little spiky spikes. And there we go. And that's how I made my hat. It's also how I make my rings and just make a bunch of different things. Um, but next we're gonna use this weird little pink monkey, same design, but we're gonna compound two modifiers on the top. So we're gonna do the same thing with the wireframe, just add the basic wireframe. And then we're gonna do the first one we did, which is the subdivision surface. And that's just gonna smooth it out. So now we've got a wireframe that's smooth. And if we crank it up, it starts to look kind of like a Voronoi-esque type design. So I've done this for like vases, trash cans, um, all kinds of hats, like all kinds of stuff. And it looks like you've done all this crazy work, but you haven't, you just added two modifiers. It's crazy. 
<laughs> and then let's go ahead and jump into the next or last Suzanne, which is the same design, but uh, this is one you're gonna do use a lot. Uh, if you ever take any of my courses is the solidify modifier. So definitely remember this one. Say if you take a mesh that's open, like if it's just a shell, then you can actually turn the shell into something that's 3D printable by using the solidify modifier. So we'll just go ahead and add solidify. And now it's gonna add thickness to this shell. It's almost like a mask. You know how a mask have that really small thickness? It's gonna do that to any of your designs and you can type in the exact millimeter thickness that you want for the entire model. So it's pretty crazy. You know, I've even made a lamp out of this Suzanne just by making it really big and cutting a hole in the top. And it looks amazing. So there's just tons of different stuff that you can do with modifiers. Again, I don't want you to ever apply your modifiers because it just keeps you very flexible, very open and very generative. So, you know, in a week or two weeks or a year from now, if you ever open up a design, you can always change everything on the fly. You're never locked in or none of your effects are ever baked in to your final designs. So it's very, very, very helpful when working with clients and you can do, you know, lots of different things from one design. So yeah, that is the secret or the power of the modifiers. They're incredible. I don't know why more people aren't talking about them because they're, they're just insane. So that is the modifiers. I know that was really fast. So if anyone has any questions, just let me know uh, in the chat before we dive into secret number two. It looks like we're about 30 minutes in, so that's pretty good. So hopefully we can get you out of here in about an hour or 30 minutes or so. So I'm not seeing any questions. Let me know in the uh, chat if this is helpful for anyone or um, yeah, just give me some feedback. Let me know what y'all thinking. I'm gonna take a drink of some coffee. Very cool modifiers, cool, Ryan. Love learning about modifiers. Okay, cool. Thanks for the feedback, y'all. I love it too, I'm obsessed. I think it's amazing and fun. So now let's go ahead and jump in to secret number two, which are tools that will make you more efficient when you're designing. So let's go ahead and jump on in. So secret number two are some things that I use every single day for every single project, whether it's for personal use or for company use. And this is something that's gonna help you look for design errors. So how many of y'all would like to be able to instantly know exactly what's wrong with your file or be able to add or subtract objects together in real time on the fly and keep it super flexible? It's crazy, it's awesome. So Ryan, or Ryan says, yep. So now let's talk about the add-ons. These are free things that come inside of Blender. Remember, this is not training. You don't have to follow along, but all you gotta do is go into preferences and then just turn on the add-ons. One's called Bull Tool. The other one is called 3D Print Toolbox. So as long as you search for those, you can just check the little box and you're good to go. You have them. And these are gonna help you tremendously uh, when you're trying to just find out uh, different things about your model or trying to fix them or how to export them or just clean them up in general. So you can do the area. So it'll give you the cubic centimeters of the model. You can check if it's solid uh, or watertight as they call it. So um, it'll test and tell you where the holes are in your design. It's crazy. So you can click on the button and then it'll actually highlight where the issue is. So it's saying the eyes have some issues. I could do intersections and then there's a little button down here. So there's 58 intersecting faces right there around the eyes. So Blender, the 3D printing toolbox is just telling me, hey, idiot, the problem is right here, fix it. So that's really cool. And then there's degenerate, which usually deals with scale, but we're not gonna talk too much. You've got distorted, which is any faces that have been stretched way too far and the computer doesn't know what to do with it or when it sends it to your slicer, it doesn't know, you know how it's gonna fix these. So I'll show you how to fix these with the click of a button, but all those faces are messed up. And then your thickness. So this is like telling um, your model or you telling you uh, if there's any thin parts of your model that might not 3D print. Then there's edge sharp and overhang. So overhangs are just anytime you're gonna need support material to kind of, you know, I'm sure most of you have used support material if you've printed anything, but this will tell you where the design needs support material. So that's all pretty cool, but kind of wanna show you actually how to use this. Um, so one way is like, let's just take the eyes. Since Blender told us the eyes have some issues, we'll just pop the eyes out and just name that eyes. And so now we have two objects, the eyes and the head. And notice we got big holes in the head. So we'll just do check all with the 3D print toolbox. 
And there we go. We've got 26 non-manifold edges right there. It's highlighted for us. And we'll just say, make manifold. Hey, looky there. So then it just fixed the design for us. We can check all again. And notice that non-manifold edge is now zero. And that's what you want. You just want zeros all the way down. This one says non-flat faces 22. So that means we just got to fix these non-flat faces. And lo and behold, the 3D print toolbox has a button for that. It's called cleanup and you just click distorted. And there it goes. It's fixed all your distorted, uh, your polygons or your faces right there. And now look, everything has zeros. That's what you want. That's how you know you got it. Uh, overhanging faces we can ignore because we're gonna fix that in just a moment. So we've got the head fixed. Everything's looking good. That is actually 3D printable, but the eyeballs are still these like hollow shells. So notice if we look at the back, we've just got big cups and it's saying that there's 16 non-manifold edges. That just means there's big holes. And so we can use the 3D print toolbox to just select them and then just say, make manifold. Boink, looky there. Now the eyes are fixed. They're ready to 3D print. And it does say that we have some thin faces down here. So we just click on that. Blender will tell us exactly where the issue is. And then we say, okay, that edge right there may be too thin for the 3D printer. Let's go ahead and fix that. So you would just grab the edge, just like you would in real life, just grab the top of it and then just ever so slightly, just start to like pull the edge down. And then uh, once you pull the edge down, it's gonna make that edge less thick. And then if you check, notice we have zeros for everything. And that's what you want. You want everything to be just ready to go, all zeros. And now we have both of these objects are 3D printable. Now we can kind of melt them together in the software uh, without actually melting them together. So to do that, we're gonna use the bool tool, which is another free add-on. And you just shift click both objects and then click on union, boom. And so Blender's done like four or five steps for you. And the design is gonna stay very flexible. So the eyes are, are melted to the head, but you can always change it, always adjust it on the fly, anytime you need to. That way you're not like, oh no, uh, an hour ago I put the eyes on, now I can't move them. So this is gonna keep you from running into that problem. And it just makes it super easy and super fun uh, to do things. You can also subtract things with the bull tool. So say if I don't want this Suzanne head to print with support materials, then I can add, uh, I call it like a cutter cube. And essentially I'm just gonna chop off the bottom of this design. That way the 3D printer, uh, when it starts to print, it'll have a nice like solid foundation that uh, the printer can print from. So I'm just gonna chop off the bottom of the ears in the head here, just shift click both and then do difference. And looky there, so now it's cut off the bottom. And what's cool is that you can take that cube, the wireframe of it and just move it up and down in real time and kind of adjust you know, how far do I want this cut to be? So that's super powerful. And again, you're not hurting the design. You're not cutting anything off the design. You're just kind of pre-visualizing and having fun. So it's pretty cool. And then you can also save your files. So you just tell the 3D print toolbox where you want the file to go and then hit export. And this is really helpful for like doing renditions or if you're updating and fixing, updating, and fixing. It's very, very fast workflow. And then you can send it into your slicer of choice. This is Prusa Slicer, and then just slice it on up. And there you go. So now we've got a 3D printable design that is fully flexible, fully open, um, exact millimeters that we wanted. And so there you go. Now we've got, we can 3D print this whole thing. And that's how you fix an object and kind of combine things together. So I know that's a lot to take in uh, just because, but I just really wanted to show you um, what the software is po possible of doing. So. That is secret number two. And so we got BV, very helpful, cool. So I know there's a lot to take in, but I just wanna say thanks for everyone who's stuck around. This is a lot of information. <laughs> and so now we're gonna go into secret number one. If y'all are ready, let me know in the chat. And we're gonna talk about something that I've made for my students that is extremely powerful and you're gonna get it today for free just for hanging out with us and being on this uh, live stream. So let's go ahead and dive on it. So the number one secret that we've created is the Blender hack file. It's a PTT starter file, and you're gonna get this today. And what this is gonna do is just set up Blender for your printer, okay? So most of y'all have your printer, you probably know your build dimensions, uh, but this is something that's just gonna help you uh, be able to type in the millimeters of what you want in Blender and be ready to go. So say hello to Blender hack file. Again, this is not training, so you don't have to follow along. Just watch and observe. So this is something I made for a GoPro, uh, but 
I made it way too big and I can't scale it down because the GoPro won't fit anymore. So I've done this many times when I first started, but I created this thing inside of the Blender hack file that's gonna help you see this problem before you actually get into designing. So it's gonna kind of give you a reference of your 3D printer volume while you're designing. So when you first open up Blender, it's gonna look like this. It's gonna be made for kind of like 3D graphics and stuff, but notice that this cube here is actually in millimeters. I mean, sorry, meters. So that's 2000 millimeters. It's ginormous. It's like the size of a room. Uh, but all you have to do is open up the file that you can download today from us. And it's called Blender for 3D printing. Open it up and you're done. Now it's all set up for 3D printing. It's got your Suzanne monkey. It's got your millimeters set up. The grid is in millimeters. Everything is, it's like 15 steps that have already been automated for you. Plus you've got your 3D printer volume up here at the top. And it's kind of hard to see, but it's this yellow box that is gonna represent your 3D printer. So you can type in any printer you have, just double click it, rename it, whatever your printer name is. Mine's the CR10. So I'm going to just type in CR10 volume. You can do Ender 3 volume, Prusa volume, anything you want. And then you want to type in the dimensions of your build volume. So you can do that by hitting in for information and then typing in the dimensions right there. So if you had a small printer, you could do 100 by 100 by 100 and it will auto update for, update for you which is pretty cool. So now you know uh, you know, how big you can 3D print. And then it can also do uh, live renders and 360 product shots automatically for you. So I've set this up for you so you don't have to know anything about film. I went to film school. So this is just basic three-point lighting. And it's gonna help you whenever you wanna send like files to Instagram or any kind of socials or to like clients. And this is a benchy in a bottle <laughs> that I made in Blender, uh, courtesy of Creative Tools, so thank you. But essentially it's a benchmark for the benchy. <laughs> and so we've got lights, cameras, we've got a background, you can just turn on the background, boom, now you got a lighting studio and you can turn that off when you don't need it. And there you go. So now you can you know, take really cool, high quality photos or videos of your anything you design. So all you gotta do is hit zero and that will take you into your camera view, kind of like you're looking through a camera. So you can say, yeah, I like that. I like the way that's looking. And then just go render image and or hit F12 and boom, you got a picture and you can just save it. So now you've got a photo that you can send to anyone or to clients or just for yourself or pre-visualized colors, but it gets even better. Not only can you just take photos, but you can actually do product videos. So this is what I send to all of my clients if I'm going to you know, bedazzle them or wow them, is just take your design and then click and drag and hover it over this 360 controller right here. Just hold shift and it'll link to that 360 controller. And I've already set it up for you where it'll just rotate your design around in a perfect 360. Uh, you can increase the speed if you want to, but this is a kind of a nice slow pace. And not only that, you can change all the colors in real time. This is why Blender is so powerful. It's one of the only 3D programs that has a real time render engine, which is insane for a free software. You can pre your filament colors. You can just try different looks that you wanna do. You can make it look crazy for a product, for um, like a client. But really I use it just for just making cool thumbnails or to kind of pre-visualize what I wanna do. You can also change the background color. So if you want it to look a little different, uh, this one, you know, we've got, maybe we do like a light blue um, and then we've got our red, but maybe we wanna change the bottle. So we just click on bottle, change the color, all this and <laughs> Shay says, wow, wow, wow. And Andre had no idea Blender could be so easy to use. Yeah, so I think everything has a learning curve, but it's, you know, it's just a really powerful piece of software that I love and I just want more people to be aware of what it can do for 3D printing. Yeah, you're welcome, Shaw. And so now we've got something. This is, I kind of like this look. This is like your, you know, yellow on the blue, very loud kind of image. Um, you can also change your lights. So I've got lights set up for you. You can turn them off just by clicking these little eyeballs. And that's gonna, you know, make it look however you want it to look. Or you can even change the intensity, but you really don't have to do anything. I've set it all up for you. And then once you're kind of like, okay, I like this look, I think it's looking great. You just have to switch and tell Blender that you want to export a movie. So you just go down here and say movie, pick any one of those, and then go up to the top and say render animation. And Blender will just do the rest for you. It'll just render out all the different frames and then you can have, you'll have a little movie wherever you saved it. So it's pretty powerful and crazy and insane. Um, but you're also gonna get this, the, this design uh, today. So you can download uh, this little Vinci in a bottle design that I made uh, for free. 
So if you want that, you can download that at the end of the uh, event today. But yeah, so that's secret number one. Uh, you're going to get that all today. And yeah, <laughs> someone said, God bless your heart. Thank you, Shaw. Yeah, so this is just the tip of the iceberg of what is possible with this software. We're really just getting warmed up. Uh, but another thing I wanted, and I promised y'all, uh, was that we're going to do a little bit of sculpting. So I want to show y'all the easy way uh, to do some sculpting. So let's just go ahead and jump into that. Uh, Ryan says, thank you. You're very welcome, Ryan. So this is Blender. You just open up your hack file and just do new file general. And then you can just bring in any object you want. So I'm going to delete the monkey here just by hit X and then delete it. And then you can bring in anything you find. Just go file, import, and then STL. So it can be an OBJ, STL, anything. And then I'm going to use uh, IO3D. These are Ed's files that he sent me. And so I'm going to use this cute little guy, Dink. It's like his uh, mascot. So we're going to sculpt on this. So just bring in any file. Here's our Dink. I'll hit period to, to center it. And then all you have to do to sculpt on something is just switch into sculpt mode. So you just sculpt mode. And then when you first start doing it, it looks kind of crappy. Like it doesn't look that good. But if you turn on dynamic topology, this little checkbox right here, now it, or in, you know, do your detail size. So maybe like less is more. So if you do detail like six, then you can actually just start drawing on it. But first you need to pick a brush. So just pick any brush. They have tons of brushes. They're always updating new brushes. And you can, uh, we actually just made a sculpting course about all the different brushes that you can take. Um, but essentially just start clicking and dragging. And now it's just gonna start magically sculpting. And Blender's sculpting is insanely powerful. Um, you can do all different types. If you wanna just add clay, you can increase your brush size with F and then just start adding clay, just like it was like digital Play-Doh. And this to me is super fun. It does take a lot of time to get better and better at sculpting, just like everything. Uh, you can also use a pen tablet, uh, but I'm just using my mouse in a, in a, on a laptop to do this. You know, I'm not doing anything. I don't have any special gear or anything. So that's something you can do. Um, we can also draw something maybe down here on the foot. Um, another thing I like to do, this isn't mandatory, but you can always go to the overlays here and click mat caps and change the view. So if you want to add like different looks to your sculpting, sometimes it helps just kind of see what's, what's going on with your sculpting. I like this one right here, which is this weird rainbow funky color. Um, and it just kind of helps you see while you're sculpting. So that's another helpful tip. Uh, but let's draw some stuff. So I'm going to just, since this is Ed's uh, mascot, we can just put Ed, you know, on the foot, kind of like Toy Story. <laughs> so we've got Ed marked on that. And then you can hold control and do the opposite. And that will push in instead of bring it up. So it just does the opposite when you hit control. And that's pretty much it uh, for sculpting. It's super easy. And that's like the easiest way to, to sculpt something. There is another way, which is with a modifier. Uh, so the... The way I just showed you here is very easy, but it's also very destructive. So, um, you know, I would prefer you to do it with a modifier, but uh, this is the fun and easy way that I wanted to show you all today, just how to get started sculpting. So that's a little bit of sculpting uh, for y'all. So hopefully that kind of showed, inspired you to maybe do some sculpting. I know some people like sculpting and some people don't. I love sculpting. I think a lot of people who don't consider themselves artists are kind of intimidated by it, but I think it's a very, very powerful skill to have just to add details or textures to anything you design for 3D printing. So that's what I wanted to share with you all today. Those are the tips plus the bonus. And now I want to challenge you. So, um, you know, this is, I call it the keep creating challenge. That's my motto to myself is just keep creating, keep creating, keep creating keep creating. We got a question here. Is it possible to fuse two separate designs together? Yes. So dreamer boy, 85, uh, you can use the bull tool. That's the easiest one. You can also do it with sculpting to like really melt the items together, uh, with the bull tool as well. And then you can kind of blend that edge. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, but really what I want y'all to do, if you are inspired to design is just try and uh, challenge yourself to create one thing or one thing a week or one thing a month and just try and stick to that habit. Me personally, I'm doing trying to design something every single day, which sounds crazy, but I just want to be one of the best 3D print designers on the planet. I already am, but I'm just going to keep getting better and better and then sharing this information with all my, my followers and my students and my friends. So that's what we're doing. And so here we go. Um, these are some of the ways that if, say, if you want to keep learning, 
Uh, you know, how can you keep learning 3D print design? Where do you keep learning 3D print design? Not many people are talking about this, uh, the design aspect of it. So here are some places that you can uh, learn it. So first and obviously is YouTube. That's where I learned a lot of stuff when I first started. Um, there's tons and tons and tons and crazy amounts of stuff. It is a little random. So you may not get the, like a streamlined kind of flow that you may get from other things, but it's incredible. And there's all kinds of stuff. I also encourage you to become a YouTuber if you think you want to share your designs with uh, people online. It's a great way to build awareness and just have fun and meet a lot of cool people. So YouTube, obviously. Um, it also is a little distracting on YouTube sometimes. I know some of my students have said that uh, YouTube, you know, it has a lot of ads and it has a lot of other videos that you can watch that could take your attention away. So, you know, that's one of the downsides, but YouTube's awesome. So definitely check out YouTube. You could go to college. Um, this is, I, I went to art school, so I've, I'm kind of educated in film, but you can go to like design school, 3D modeling school. They are expensive and probably the more ones that are up to date are going to be even more expensive, uh, but you can definitely do this. And, um, you know, that's a way to really, really commit to learning something, but you don't have to do that, especially if you don't have a lot of money or you're not really sure that's the way you want to go. I would suggest doing something free and easy or free, you know, that you can just kind of get your feet wet, kind of try it out. And then you're like, yes, this is it. I'm a designer. Then maybe go into college, especially if you're, um, you know, just starting out with kind of, what do I do with my life? That's a good pro process to go. Um, also, you can take online courses like Udemy or Skillshare. I've done a ton of, of, uh, of online courses with uh, all kinds of different. So I just love learning. So I take it. The good thing is you actually pay for this. You pay for the class. Usually they're not much, uh, but it really like kind of like gets you to be like, oh, I paid for this. Like I really need to commit and learn this stuff. So I know there are some things that I get for completely free and I don't really do it uh, because I didn't pay for it. So uh, one example, I did the Wim Hof breathing and I paid like a hundred dollars for the course. But if I didn't pay a hundred dollars, I probably wouldn't have done the 10 weeks of breathing and cold showers and stuff. But since I paid, I was like, I got to get my money's worth. I got to do it. So that's the good thing about taking online courses. Another thing is they're kind of lonely. You may not be able to find your tribe. You can definitely find something that's really motivating and exciting, but it may be tricky or you may fall off. You know, you may do it for a few days or a few weeks or a few months but you may dribble off over time if you're not kind of around like-minded people. So that's what my company has started. I kind of started doing online courses in the beginning, but now I was like, no, I need it more. Like I want to be something where it's more interactive. I really love interactive, like this live thing today, which is getting to know people. And so it really just getting around other like-minded people. Um, so that's why we built PTT.live. And that is for monthly consistent content. So we're constantly making new design lessons. I'm listening to my students and asking like, what do you guys want to learn next? And then they're telling me, Hey, I want to learn this. or I want to learn how to make miniatures. I want to learn sculpting. or I want to learn photogrammetry. So that's just what we do. We just learn and grow and, you know, inspire each other. And that's one of the things I was talking about with our discord is just getting in a community is very, very helpful. If this is something that you really want to try to do. So those are some of the ways that you can learn, you know, actually start learning 3D print design more and more today. And I would suggest, um, and then, you know, there's always more. So if you want to design more, does anyone out there, do y'all mind if I tell you a little bit how I can help or how our company can help you become a more designer, a better designer? Let me know in the chat. Let me know if you, uh, you know, were inspired to start designing or if you were overwhelmed and this is like not your thing. That's totally cool. But i um, hoping that a few of y'all, even just one person today is like, this is what I want to do. I love designing. This is great. Cause that's what I, I, I just, it's just like a magical superpower. Once you like really start to be able to create your own ideas, it's just, it's, it's just addictive and crazy. So someone said, please, every, even a simple design, how'd they do that? Why'd they do that that way, et cetera. And modeling them makes you discover more exactly ninja. And then Rick Blake, what's up, Rick? Thanks for coming. I rotate a lot because I rotate a lot of designs just to make them printable. Yes, that's very true. You can do that with pretty much any software. Um, so, okay, Ryan said he's interested. Okay, cool. So today we have a lot of different ways that we teach students how to become designers. Uh, one is I can do it for you. That's what I do for all my clients. Um, you can also do 
our group, kind of like a boot camp. Uh, that's what we do every few months, maybe like a few times a year. We'll do like a 30 day boot camp. So that's what we're going to do in January. But what I wanted to talk to you today about is our all access memberships. So these are monthly 3D print designs that you get access to, like a library. Uh, you'll also get monthly courses that are always updating, and I'm always updating the old courses too. So it's always the freshest material. And which is most important, the community. So just being involved in a bubble or sphere of like-minded people. So this is uh, the main goal of this is really just to get you to take your idea and be able to print it. So you can follow my like step-by-step -step lessons, which you definitely will probably do in the beginning. But I encourage you, what I really love from my students is when they start making it their own or they kind of take what I started and then they add their own little flair to it. Like that's what this is really about is like really getting you comfortable with creating your own ideas. I don't want you just to replicate mine uh, essentially, but I could tell you a lot more about it, but I wanted to let y'all hear kind of some uh, testimonials from our actual students that have taken some of our uh, memberships and our workshops and just our live trainings. So let's go ahead and kick it off. the community of it yeah. um, where we're meeting every Sunday and um, showing our work so far and you build off of other people's ideas and you see like how they took uh, the lesson to a next level and yeah. that was really invigorating is Good. talking the same language with other people other modelers and you yeah. know just I don't know it was, yeah. it was fun So I took your course and it just like, one, I think that coupled with the new Blender update just made it all click. I mean, there was like some three minute videos, there's some like 15-ish minute videos, but they're all broken up into pretty short videos that are yeah. very to the point. And so you want, you feel like you're progressing pretty quickly because it's just going video after video. It's just like, I have, Blender's like my favorite thing right now. <laughs> That's it's, good. I'll just say, uh, Jay Wall, I've, I've always appreciated your stuff. Like you've made 3D printing super exciting Dude, and right back at you're you. always enthusiastic and optimistic. And I love that. I think in ninth grade, that's when I found out that product design was even a thing. I didn't even consider the fact that every object in the world has to be designed exactly. by someone. That plus 3D printing, then you can literally make just about anything. I mean, you said it yourself, you can be anything. We're creating the jobs of the future. It's yeah. so fun. So thank you so much for finally letting me get into it. It was one of my New Year's resolutions. But essentially um, what we do here at Print That Thing is we are an education platform and um, we teach people how to become 3D print designers. And eventually I want you to become professional 3D print designers that are doing this full time, making tons of money and doing exactly what you love. That's really what... I'm doing and what I want my other people, you know, just everyone I'm around to be doing too. So again, we're going to be talking about the all access membership, which is monthly designs, courses, and community plus live events. We meet every single Wednesday to talk about how to make money with your 3D printing designs. Uh, but really you got to just start basics and kind of work your way up. And from the very first, um, Lessons, you're going to be making very, very simple things, but they're going to keep compounding on each other. So you're going to learn, you know, soft modeling, box modeling, complex booleans, sculpting, um, you know, how to slice different objects into multiple parts where they fit together, um, how to measure things from the real world and actually make an, a simple product. Um, so you're going to be doing things like this on your first lesson, just like we did today. Um, it's very self-paced, so you can go as you want to and kind of do things as you feel inspired or as you set a goal. But rec we recommend kind of like about an hour or two a week, and that'll get you done uh, at a pretty consistent pace. And everything, like I said, is just going to keep compounding on top of itself. So you're always learning more and using the things that you learned in the previous lessons for the future. And so, you know, a lot of people are teaching uh, 3D printing, but we are the only people teaching Blender specifically for 3D printing and can get you there super quick. Like, like I said, we have our student Discord, which is amazing. I love it. Um, it's just to chat with me and other designers all across the world. 
um, just about 3D print design. This is from one of our students, Max. He actually took our full uh, boot camp and then started scanning trees and making lampshades out of them that he could sell. Um, if you're someone who maybe wants to add artsy kind of look to your designs, then you can use Blender for that. Um, but you know, you don't have to be an artist to do Blender. Um, or maybe you've tried designing before and you stopped and started. This could help you just as, you know, knowing that you are paying for something that's going to help you design and you have a community there to back you up and to ask questions and to get feedback and to just stay inspired. So we've taught powerhouses in the industry. This is my buddy Devin over at Make Anything. Uh, he wanted to learn Blender. This is one of our students who knew nothing about design. Now he's making his own products that he was able to do for his work. Uh, Mike Russo. Yeah. So he's done all this stuff. So if you are ready to design, then, uh, you know, now's your time and you can always, you know, just start making anything you can think of really. So if you do sign up for our all access, you're going to get design theory, which is going to teach you about just design principles in general. You're going to learn the blender basics, and then you're going to do box modeling, uh, for the first few, uh, lessons and kind of how to do subtraction. Then you're gonna do custom lithopanes and really understand that. You're gonna do wearables with text and learn how to customize with text and add things. You're gonna do advanced Booleans, soft box modeling, slicing, uh, you know, objects that may be bigger than your printer or that you just need to be sliced up. And again, doing actual sculpting for 3D print specifically. And then you'll measure your cell phone and actually make something for the real world that works with your own product. And so um, not only that, but you're going to get early access to all of our early courses. So right now I'm working on a sculpting course and a modifiers course that goes over every single sculpt brush, every single feature in the sculpting, and then also every single modifier and how it can be used for 3D print, for 3D printing. We've got our Discord where you can stay motivated. Plus, you're also going to get access to our members only downloads where you can download all my future or current and future designs, and you can cancel anytime. You know, there's no contracts, there's no like weird stuff. It's just like, hey, you know, you can send me an email and be like, you know, I want to cancel it. And all this is valued at 1016. Or if you were going to college, you know, it could cost up to 50K, but we're not going to charge you that because that is just insane. Um, so since you kind of hung out with us today on uh, the seminar, we wanted to give you a crazy, crazy discount uh, for your design adventure. If you want to start learning with us again, you don't have to, but we only charge $20 a month for ongoing lessons and, um, access to all of our co content. But since you hung out with me today, we're going to, you're going to get all of this for a low, low price of $1.99, uh, using the coupon code. And that is 90% off your first month. So, uh, it's only going to last 48 hours and you got a 14 day money back guarantee if you're not completely satisfied, but I'm sure you will be because it's very cool. And so even if it's not for you, you know, we are not gonna hold your money hostage. We'll just give it back. Um, but yeah, just use this code design 90 within the next 48 hours, and that will get you access to all that. You can click the link below and just put the, the code in and you'll get it for 199. You also get um, a seven day free trial, no matter what, you know, you decide to do. So really you have no choice or no, like there's no downside really. It's just, if you want to start learning, then this is an, a simple and effective way to keep learning uh, because the future is 3d printing, I think. And so, yeah, let's do it. So let's go ahead and open up. Um, well, actually, uh, thanks for everyone for coming. And so, you know, we've learned the flexible modifiers. We've learned the powerful add-ons to how to quickly add things. And you're also going to get the blender hack file and the Benchy in a bottle and all these Suzannes. Um, so yeah, so this is just some ways that you can start learning. Again, this is not the only way you can learn, but if you want to join us and become one of the best 3D print designers like me and my friends and my, my students, then let's go, let's do it. So you can do all this for $1.99 today if you do your first month with Design 90. And let's go ahead and open it up for live Q&A. So let me know if there's anything or any questions that y'all had. Uh, someone said, is it U.S. pricing? Yes. So this is all U.S. pricing. Um, so I'm not sure what the conversion rate would be for you. But uh, if you want to do that, here we go. So we got new courses coming out this week. Let me know in the chat if there's anything you want to learn. And I can start making those courses as well. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Thanks for coming to hang out. Sorry for the technical difficulties there. Uh, but uh, 
I'm glad y'all came out and hung out. This I've been so excited. I've been telling Amber, I was like, I'm so excited. Like, this is what I'm built for. I love just filmmaking and teaching people and inspiring people. Um, so I really do think that 3D print design is the future and that there's a lot of fun to be had and a lot of money to be made and just actual future careers that you can really do this. So I'm going to just help show people the way on how to do this. So let's see. As Ryan said, this is great. Thanks for coming, Ryan. 30% more in Canadian. Okay. I'm not sure why. I guess that's just how it goes. Signed up before the course. Oh, cool. Thanks, Greg. I think I saw you. So I think Greg got the quarterly if I was, or maybe you did it right as we started. But yeah, there's people signing up before we even started the live event. So thank you all, everyone who's already signed up. That's great. Um, let me know if you have any other questions or design questions or questions about just getting started in general or just personal questions that you have about 3D print design. I'm going to just hang out for, you know, however long you guys need. Cool. So John said he learned a lot. Looking forward to you on the courses. Cool. Thanks, John. I'm going to try your courses. Tried before and my brain was uh, wants to explode. Hopefully you can help me. Yes. So Laura, just let me know. Again, we're in the Discord. So um, if you become a member, we can definitely help you grow and get there faster. That's my mission. Uh, really, because when I, when y'all ask questions for me, I get, you know, you're actually teaching me too. So you're my teacher, I'm your teacher, and it just works really well. So it's really fun. And so, and I like to actually really enjoy hearing what y'all are having trouble with because it helps me better understand how I can better communicate it or how I could better teach you um, for, you know, previous courses and for future courses. So, yeah. Is there any questions that people have about um, maybe software or how to build habits or anything like that? Yeah. Thanks, Peter. You're welcome for the intro to Blender. Looking forward to the course. Yeah. So, and again, Blender is just like, this is just the basics. We're going to do some crazy stuff. We're going to integrate code. We're going to integrate artificial intelligence here in the next few years where you're just using AI with you to do design stuff. So that's going to be way later, but I just want to show you the end of the road is actually doing this as a professional career. If you want to, you can totally do this as a hobby um, for free. You could do it as a hobby and make a little bit of money, or you could do it as a super profession and help people with your creative ideas. That's what I'm doing. And it's fun. It's a lot of fun. So we got a question here. Can you recommend a 3d scanner like the guy would have used to scan the tree in? So Andrew, this is um, the easiest way to do, and we're actually going to have a whole course on this, Andrew. I'm glad you asked, but it's uh, called photogametry. So you don't need a scanner. You can use a scanner if you have money to blow and you just want to spend a couple thousand dollars on a scanner, uh, then by all means do it. But you can use just a digital camera. You can even use your phone camera with a software called Meshroom. It's an open source free software. It's incredible, pow incredibly powerful, and it pairs really, really, really well with Blender. So you can just scan. All you do is take a ton of photographs around the object you want. Uh, it can't be like a shiny object. It has to be kind of like a matte, you know, no light reflections on it. Um, but you can just take like up to, I think it's like 30 to 50, you know, not a crazy amount, but just get the full rotation. You can get in and do closer ones. And you can just throw those images into Meshroom the computer algorithm just puts all the photos together and then creates a three-dimensional object from that. And it's pretty incredible. It's like millions of polygons. It's insane. So I would highly suggest using your phone or a camera that you can do like manual exposure, manual focus, anything you can do like manual controls on, any kind of camera, and then just bring those photos into Meshroom. That's what I would say. So we got... Da -da -da -da. Uh, David, somehow my reminder didn't go off. This was, yes. So David, this will be recorded and I'll send you an email out shortly. Uh, let's see. I would have this 40 years ago, says Rick. Well, hey, you got it right now, Rick. Let's go. Let's do it. So, you know, there's, there, there's no time but the now. Yeah, James said, use your phone. That's right, James. Is there any discount code for annual subscription? Uh, so you can't use, I mean, you can use Pr Design 90 for the annual subscription, but it's just going to give you the first month off. So um, that is for the yearly, but I mean, that's up to you. Most people, it kind of like depends, like most people are like, I'm going to commit to three months of learning. And then some people are like, I'm in, I'm going to learn forever. And, you know, they're kind of on my train where they're just going to do the yearly, but uh, most people just do the monthly. So um, it's really just what's best for you. Uh, you actually get a 
very big discount if you do the yearly or quarterly uh, quarterly payments, but uh, you know you don't have to. Whatever's best for you is good. Great works for that. Clone doesn't work for me at all. Not sure what clone is. Clone may be a software. That's Sha. Uh, let's see, Sandra. So is the photogrammetry the piece you use for working with logos? So logos you would probably do with just um, SVGs or you could convert it to a certain type of file type, which is like SVG, bring it into Blender or Tinkercad or uh, maybe F Fusion, and you can extract the text or the logos from that SVG file. That's what you would use for logos. Photogrammetry is more like, say if you wanted to like, like I wanna, I wanna scan, I wanna like bring this cup. I don't know if you can see it, yeah. I wanna bring this cup into, re, into my 3D software. So I would take tons of pictures of it and then the software mesh room would calculate it. And then I would bring that photogrammetry object into a 3D software that you can then manipulate even further. Uh, so photogrammetry, I think of it as like almost like borrowing from reality. So you can take things, you can take textures, you can take objects, you can take like photogrammetries of people, dogs, all kinds of stuff. So uh, that's, I wouldn't say it's for logos. You could use it for a logo, I guess, if you had like a model or like a sculpture of something, then you could scan that with photogrammetry. So hopefully that answered your question. Um, let's see. Doo -doo -doo. Looks promising. I really need help learning how to use the software to produce my designs. Yes, and that's what I really want from y'all. Really, I'm just teaching you the basics and foundations. And once you get that, you can be, you're off. You know, you're off to the races. You can, you'll just start thinking of ideas all the time, but you really do need to set up like a, some type of foundation of just all the available tools that you have to accomplish the ideas that you have inside your brain. So that's what I'm trying to help people do is just get that spark. I love seeing that, that, that light go off when someone's like, oh my gosh, I get it. Or they start being able to actually print their own ideas. It's, it's so much fun and super addictive. So what do we got here? Learn forever. Yeah, Rick is the way to get, way to go. Age 75 and I have stuff as, and I have to stuff in as much as I can. That's great, Rick. I'm right there too, dude. I'm reading like two or no, three books right now. I just do a little bit, like a chapter of each one. I'm learning stuff every day. I'm just like an autodidact, so I just love learning. Um, and it's just fun. You know, what else am I going to do? James said he's 73. Cool. But yeah, let me know if y'all have any other questions about anything 3D printing design-wise. Uh, you know, maybe, is there any courses that you guys would want to know in the future? Um, right now, the current ones are, um, we're going to do the sculpting, which is almost finished now, but you can still access that today if you want. And then we're doing um, every single modifier. So we're actually going to make products with all the modifiers. Um, <laughs> John said, 69, you can teach an old dog new tricks. That's right. You can. Yeah. I mean, my mom, she's what, 50, 60, 50, I think. 55, we'll say, <laughs> but uh, she just, she's been a court reporter her whole life, but now she's like totally changing. She's learning 3D design. She's learning, she's just starting a whole new in, um, new profession, really. And I'm so proud of her. And it's very scary to do that. So, um, you know, if you're in that boat too, just know that you can do that, especially with the internet these days. I mean, you can learn things so quickly and so fast um, that it's just, she couldn't do that a long time ago or just a little while ago. Ninja. Reiterate from earlier, is there a plugin add-on that would allow more Veroni-like designs, or is that something you'd need to do manually? Um, so there's not a plugin or an add-on for that. You can just do it with those two modifiers. Just throw on the wireframe, you know, set your measurement, you know, how thick you want the wires to be, and then just throw on a subdivision surface. And you've got, it's not like true Voronoi, but it looks like Voronoi. Uh, but you can, it'll essentially just take all of your wireframe of your design and turn it into, uh, you know, every every edge would become a Voronoi edge. So you can really get in there and manipulate it um, in real time on the fly. So it's pretty powerful. Let's see. James, I designed the first ATM in 1966 and still going. You talking about like the ATM that spits out cash? Or are you talking about something else? James invented the ATM? That's crazy. So Shaw wants to learn how to make an add-on for 3D cutters. Dude, so 
that's another thing I didn't really even talk about that much, but you can actually use, if anyone out there knows code or Python, you can actually make your own add-ons inside of Blender open source, and then you can sell those or you can give them away for free. So you could totally, if you know a little bit of Python, um, you could actually make a add-on for 3D cutters. So that is totally possible. Um, that's something I really want to get into is more code and Python and like automating lots of repetitive tasks. Or if there's something that's customizable, like someone can type in their name and then it just adds that to the design and I don't have to actually do it. Uh, that is very powerful. And that's what we're going to be talking about um, in the future in the coming years. Cash Machine, James. Okay, he did it. That's crazy. I feel honored. You're in our chat. <laughs> I'm particularly interested in using Blender. This is Laura, Laurie, Laura, um, to wear wearable to make wearable designs like armor, mask, etc. That's perfect. That's exactly what I like doing too. I'm gonna be making hats. I'm gonna be making dog armor. I'm gonna be making. I've made tons of masks already, uh, but definitely check out the Solidify tool, um, Laura. So the Solidify tool just make any kind of like just just any kind of geometry, and then add that Solidify. And you got an instant mask. It's pretty simple. And then we see, we got James, a design project for the inventor who never know how to design. Well, there you go. I don't know what you mean by that. Ryan, I want to learn Python. I want to learn Python too. And so Amber, my girl, my lover lady, Indy Mutt, she's learning um, web design, CSS, I think, and something else. But Python is just pretty, seems pretty easy. Or not easy, but it seems like shorthand. I learned a little bit of C++. That was a little tricky. Uh, let's see. Jay, thanks for the presentation. Yeah, later, Rick. Thanks for coming to hang out. That was fun. Python is great. I have to go. Yeah, anytime. If y'all need to go, uh, let's see how we did. 18 minutes over. Not bad. So sorry if I held anyone over, but you are free to go, children. Uh, keep on designing. Keep creating. I hope that y'all learn a bunch of stuff about design and, you know, still join the Discord if you, um, you know, want just inspiration and feedback. Uh, so, yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. What else we got? I have to go, but thanks. Rick, code or Python? That's funny. Import humor. <laughs> Yeah. Well, cool. Well, yeah. Later, John. Thanks for coming. Thanks for hanging out. And again, we do a live stream every Wednesday. If anyone's interested on uh, in turning this into a career or making money with it, with 3D print design, then we're going to be doing that every Wednesday. So today we did this event, but uh, yeah. I see we've got a few more people in here. So if there's anyone that's in the back of the classroom who's scared, who maybe has a question, now is your time to uh, ask away. If there's anything you want to know, any questions you have about courses, anything you have about just starting design, anything you have about effects, anything. Later, Gregory. See you in the trenches. <laughs> Later, John. We've got a few more people. I'm just going to hang out just a little bit longer. Let's see if anyone has any Anything they want to ask? Don't be scared. Don't be bashful. I'm here for you guys. If you want to learn, so do I. <laughs> here we go. I want to learn everything. <laughs> Good. Me too. Well, we're definitely... What do you want to learn, Ryan? What are you like... What are you excited about learning? Yeah, later, Dreamer Boy, 85. I'll see you on the flip side. Peace. All right. Well, I'm not seeing any other questions. So again, thank you, everybody. I really had a blast doing this. I was so excited and uh, hope to see a lot of y'all in the Discord or in the classes. Um, and we'll just keep on making stuff. You're definitely going to see stuff on our YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all these things. We're just going to be designing stuff like crazy. So James said, Blender is on my list alongside Fusion and Al... What does that say? Alibra? Alibra design. I have never heard of that. Thanks for that, James. Yeah, I want to learn Fusion eventually, but from what I've been talking to some of my buddies who know Fusion, they said that have kind of migrated over to Blender is that you really don't need Fusion after you understand Blender, but we'll see how that goes. But I think, I really think that you should just learn as many softwares as you can because then you just have more tools at your disposal and you can bring in different designs into different things. But, um, you know, everyone's just got to find their flow. Uh, let's see, John, is it... 
possible to review each session. So I guess you're meaning this. Uh, yes, you will be able to replay this. I'll send you a link. Um, all the courses are replayable. You can download them, anything that you need uh, to do. So that's, I'm not sure if that answered your question, but hopefully we got some. Uh, I got the other two boys by 10, almost a ham. Not sure what you mean <laughs> by that John Z, but interesting. Ryan, well, having the knowledge with where to find tools helps to get designs from our head and create them. So I want to learn all the tools. Yes, me too. I actually just did a course on the tool. So it literally takes every single tool that's inside of Blender and explains how to use it specifically for 3D print design. And then you're actually making 3D printable tools while you learn how to use the tools. It's tools on tools on tools. So check that out if you're interested. It, it, I thought I knew all the tools in Blender, but then av after I took every single tool and like really learned, like really learned how to use it and how to apply it, it just blew my mind and like just exploded with tons of new ideas. So it's, it's fun. It's great stuff. Yes, very nice. Well, having the knowledge, okay. But yeah, that's a, uh, that's my passion rant about why everyone should learn 3D print design. It's stupid fun. It's so crazy fun. It's it's like a superpower. Like if <laughs> if you haven't learned if you have a 3D printer and you don't have 3D print design skills, it's like what's well, I mean, it's fun, yeah, just to have a 3D printer, but if you're actually can make stuff, that's where the that's the magic. That's the fun. And also how you can help other people and yourself. Thanks, John. All right. Well, it looks like everybody's gone. Our, it says zero viewers, so I'm going to go ahead and cl close it on down, and we'll see you on Funky Town. All right. Later, everybody. Peace. <laughs>